Welcome to The Preacher Plays, Elden Ring 1000%. 10 complete playthroughs, 10 different ways, all at the same time. I am The Preacher, and in a quest to explore the lands between, through a theological lens, I'm going to do something stupid. Now, I may not be best gamer, but I am passionate about discovering the deeper meanings and the messages within each game. And as I research, I invite you to join me on a ridiculous enterprise as we embark on an oversized journey through Elden Ring 10 times at the same time. So grab your controller and let's play together. Let's start with episode one. I've got to get out of this place. This is really about having 10 different builds going through the game. And as I prepare for this closer look, I need footage and I need opportunities to, uh, to discover new things. That's when I realized we can have 10 different save files. And I see that there are 10 different starting classes. Wait a minute. Now, I am now viewing this as a personal mission to have 10 concurrent saves progressing through the game. So I'm ready whenever the DLC expansion Shadow of the Erdry drops. Let's see what my plans are this time through. These times through? Whatever. Oh, and I have to start with each of the 10 classes available because I'm not about optimization. I'm about a completionist at heart. And I'm certainly not afraid to be overleveled or, quite frankly, poorly leveled because I play poorly. Remember that. Our first contestant is the Prophet, the Dung Eater. He's overleveled already. This bad boy has high stats and everything. But this is New Game Plus 4. This is, by the way, the Preacher. No, not me, him, which is me, which is him. Anyhow, doesn't matter. Some of you know him, perhaps. He is a jack of all trades, truly a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. I've gathered together everything in this piece of kit, so we're going to play this one through as everyone's favorite opportunistic bottom feeder, the loathsome dung eater because nothing at all is off the table. I just want to curse the world. Unfortunately for you, I started New Game Plus 4 before deciding to do this style of playthrough, so you'll just have to look at some footage of me creating the preacher for my original blind playthrough when the game released. This was footage from opening day. Now, this is his basic setup, which is going to change along the way. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, I don't really have a plan for him. But we're going to start off with the Royal Baron, the Sword of Milos, or Milos, as the case may be, and the Blasphemous Blade, because it's awesome. I'm also going to use the Holy Scorpion Charm and the Ritual Sword Talisman, uh, my Golden Vow, a flask with the Holy Shrouded Cracked Tear and Cerulean Hidden Tear, and I think that will help me maximize some of my damage. This will all probably change up quite a bit, because I'm just making this one up as I go along. Slot number two is the Hero. She's going to have Hoslow's pedal whips. Let me introduce you to Mrs. Preacher. The real Mrs. Preacher is my hero, and that's how my waifu will start out. She's going for a whips build. Please don't ask. And as such, I've asked my very good friend Grimjack to take two of my whips from Mr. Preacher and mule them over for me. Thank you, Grimjack. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, and I did do a little bit of sneakery. I made one of them a frost bleed and the other one a poison bleed. So I think I can have a lot of fun with dual whips doing some status effects. Oh, and she needs leather pants from Patches. Also, please don't ask. Mrs. Preacher and Mr. Preacher have seven Elden Ring children, and I would like to introduce you right now to the Preacher's kids. We're going to start with, in slot number three, the Vagabond. This is our child Lance, or you might know him as Sir Lance a lot. He's using all lances, in fact, probably just the lance, but maybe all other great spears all the time. Uh, nothing ferrying is needed here, but I did have to delete this guy and start over. Hey, at least I saved his face. He is an independent child. I didn't need to mule anything for him since the lance is easily available at the start of the game. And the lance upgrades with regular smithing stones, of which there are plenty. More on that in a little bit. He also really loves the Giant's Hunt, Ash of War, so we're going to need to kill the Knight's Calvary for that. Ugh. It drops from the Knight's Calvary that is on the north side of Lyurnia. Yeah, 
this one here. I would also like, maybe later, to get the Eclipse Crest Great Shield for its awesome looks. It drops from the Mausoleum Knights nearby in Lyurnia. Maybe I'll use some of the Tower Shields or the Manor Tower Shield. That's on a back path in Stormvale. I just know that I love the big shields for this guy. And the guard counters, they are seriously overpowered. In slot number four, we have the Astrologer. Uh, this is Papa Smurf, as we call him. He's blue and magical. Well, at least there's no muling here at all. But I can't wait to get my Renala hat back. I did run around and grab some spells and the gravity stick. And now, at last, I'm ready for the Astrologer, Papa Smurf, to start the game. Oh, wait, I need red pants and I need a red pointy hood. No problem. There's a really cool set of red booted white pants that the perfumer in Lyurnia is wearing, and I could farm that up. Mm. And a cool red hood in the nearby cavern. How's that? That good? Maybe you can make a better outfit suggestion below. If you think Papa Smurf would look better in a different type of armor, let me know, and we'll see what we can do about that. Up next is the warrior class. His name is David Hasselhoff. He's here in slot number five. He is kid number three, the Hoff. He is the Knight Rider. No, not that Knight Rider. This Knight Rider. This is my Knight's Cavalry build. It's partially a mule build, armor and extra weapons. And I tried to get sliders to recreate Hasselhoff. And so far, I haven't been able to do it. But hey, he's going to be wearing armor the whole time. Anyhow. I'm going to be using drops from uh, the Knight Rider between the Bellum Church and the East Ryalak area gate, uh, right where you can get the other Ash of War I mentioned earlier. And the flail drops from the one in the Weeping Peninsula. The armor drops way late in the game, and I want it now. Hey, thanks, Grimjack. Up next is, in slot number six, the Prisoner build. Uh, this one we've named Akanthanas, which means thorny. And there's a reason for that. Um... Number six is this prisoner. There's one in every family, right? This little lady here is the Bearing Hunter's little niece in training. Now, does that mean that she has to kill all of the merchants too? I haven't made up my mind there. Please vote below so that I know whether or not I'm going to go on a killing spree. If I do, I will show you the dire results. The, she is an AOK blade, blade user because I've always wanted to. I think it's such a cool weapon, and I've never adequately played with it. And since the prisoner has some magic, I'll probably throw some of that in as well. The regalia of Aokade you can get by jumping carefully over here on the beach. And looky there, I got it. You can get somber smithing stones for this one laid throughout Lyurnia. I have two shields that somewhat fit the theme and will hold me over till I can kill my uncle, the real bell-bearing hunter, and steal his stuff. I told you, she was prisoner material, right? First, there's the Spiral Horn Shield. This is in the Uld Palace Ruins, in the ruined Labyrinth Site of Grace, north and on the right, along the lakeshore, or the left, along the lakeshore. And will it cold infuse this one, perhaps, for a little extra cold burst damage? Or the Shield of the Guilty. This is in the cellar of the area where the Demi-Human Ruins are in the Weeping Peninsula. And again, I may cold infuse that when the opportunity comes along later. But I had to go find them. In the seventh slot is the Wretch. Uh, this one I've named Plectane, which means violent. In slot number seven, Plectane uh, came into this world naked, covered in somebody else's blood, and he's going out the same way. At least, I suspect he will mostly go for the Onasharal look, but we'll see. This one is going to be more of a fist and claw weapon build. I would have loved to have built Sly Stallone here, but I'm not all that talented, and I couldn't find the sliders. He can beeline it to the isolated merchant shack in Kaled and buy the spiked Kestis. By the way, if you want to provide sliders for any of these characters, I will, when I get to Fia's room, be able to change them up. So if you posted some sliders below, I'll do some changes for you. In slot number eight is the Confessor class. This is Mr. Angry. Couldn't think of a better name for him. He's my lovely little mad pumpkin head. He's going for the Mad Pumpkin Head build, and that means that I'm going to have to farm for the Pumpkin Head helmet. Like this. And that means farming, because I've never gotten one. But I did today. Literally, the day that I wrote that, I got one on Mr. Preacher's file at long last. And with a little bit of farming, I was able to get one for Mr. Angry. But I farmed this one up, and I still need to dress the part. 
best I can figure is the end game gold mask garments, if you can call them that. So I needed that, and I need to try and get the commander standard as early as possible. Once again, thank you, Grimjack. Since they give me one for free, I can farm for my own flails. Thank you very much. In the ninth slot is the bandit. The Parankas, which means boastful, or the braggart. In slot 9, we'll have the loudmouth of the bunch. He's ugly. This one is going to be the mostly uh, dragon incantations and the roars. And fortunately, in this current patch, the roar medallion now increases the output of damage for the dragon attacks. That's awesome. It feels kind of like he should have the octopus helm, and that means farming. Probably just at the lake where Alexander is stuck in the mud very early on in the game. Hooray! That also means that he's basically ready, just as he is. And I also have to go down into the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave in order to farm up, or to obtain, rather, the Dragon Talisman. In the 10th slot, last of all, is the Samurai class. I've named him Tumahu El Hu, which translates roughly to he has an uncleanness. We have the Samurai, and I'm not entirely sure what build to do with him yet. I kind of want to make this one center around status effects, which explains the name, but we'll see. Also, everybody else seems to love katanas, and I've really never actually played with them. So, yeah, I think it's time. I feel like the Ice Dragon katana would go nice with him, so we're probably going to katana this guy up by muling over a couple of late-game weapons just for fun. Oh, by the way, not the Rivers of Blood. Why? Because everybody does the Rivers of Blood. So the Dragon Scale Blade katana uses somber smithing stones. The Rikard katana, ooh, that would be fun, uses the serpent bone katana is what it's called, has extra effective speedy poison, and it uses regular smithing stones. And by the way, I learned a few really important things about muling throughout this whole episode. The first is that mule builds can drop a max of eight items on the ground at a time. They have to be picked up before you can continue dropping, because if you drop that knife, the first one kind of falls off the, the availability list. And I also learned you can only trade items equivalent to the level of what you have at the time. So level one only. I already mentioned that. And third, this is kind of a freebie. It's cool if you have a few friends you can trust. So I'm going to say thanks to Grimjack for ferrying all that for me. And then I'm going to leave you with a request. Would you please put down in the comments below which one of these 10 builds you think I should take first into the DLC? But for right now, I'm the Preacher. This is has been my opening into a thousand percenting Elden Ring, and I will see you the next time.